Good morning, y'all. Welcome back to the studio. I'm Lane Zolke, and this is Master Engraver TV. I want to thank everyone who has subscribed so far. I really did not expect the channel to be this successful this fast. We hit 5,000 subscribers yesterday. And to celebrate that, I wanted to do a little series of videos for y'all. Now, I've been looking at the comments below the videos to see what you wanted to see, and I've drawn up a practice plate here with several of those suggestions. Uh, a lot of you want to see some more gold inlay and some scroll design. So I've got a bunch of those things included on one plate. We'll do this as a series of videos. We'll break it up into about eight different parts. And uh, let's take a look at what that looks like. All right, y'all, here's our model steel practice plate. And here's what we've got scribed on it. In the center here, we've got a section of three scrolls. And we're going to use that as a way to show off pneumatic engraving. And then in a second episode, we're going to show hammer and chisel and hand push. From there, we're going to move on to some gold borders. I've got basically four sides here, so I can show off four different techniques for setting in gold line border. Here we've got a large gold leaf. It's going to allow me to show you gold overlay. And this little gold square here is going to be a method for setting gold into the background using a stipple tool. Next to that, we've got some American scroll and some fine English scroll. Now off to the left here, we've got some really loose vine scroll. And above it, this is going to be a flare cut that I do using a round graver and 120s for the sides. Now above that, we've got some borders. This is a running wheat border. On the right side, we have a single leaf. On the left side, we've got a double leaf. Now here we've got a couple of backbones with nothing in them. So I'm open to suggestions as to what you might want to see. We've also got some borders here with nothing in them. So if you like, leave it in the comments below what you might want to see put in those borders, and we'll see what we can do. So let's get this chucked up in the device and uh, see what it looks like under the scope. All right, we are ready to get started. We've got our plate chucked up in the vise. We've got sharp gravers. And best of all, we've got this funny looking contraption here. Now, engraving is notoriously hard to photograph and hard to film and we are using iPhones which makes it doubly hard. Uh, so I had to come up with a system that was going to show off the engraving, allow you to see it as I'm cutting it, and I think we've got a solution here. So we're going to start cutting. We're going to uh, cut the first section of scroll here. We're going to be using the Graver Max pneumatic hand pieces for this one. Then we'll move on to hammer and chisel and hand push. But for this first segment, let's get started. Time to cut it. Before I start, I thought I would show you a quick tip. If you have got your first vise and you're just starting to work with practice plates like this, notice the way I've got this chucked in the vise. Now, a lot of people when they first start, one of the things that they'll do is set their practice plates in like this. And what this is, is a trampoline and vibration is one of the worst enemies of good engraving. So turn your plate diagonally if you can. So let's go ahead and start on our first scroll here. I'll take you two through start to finish. We're going to do this with the pneumatic handpiece. See if we can zoom in here. I'm going to crank up the Graver Max and get started. This is a C-scroll and it's one of the ways that you start a scroll section if you're starting in the middle of a space as opposed to starting off of a border like this leading in. And it's one of the most common ways to start out a scroll. Now as you're rotating, you want to make sure that you stop the graver whenever you stop rotating. Don't push it any further than you can push your hand. And then I'll start the graver again and keep rotating. And there's our main backbone. So let's start our first leaf section here. And 
mild steel practice plates are like butter they're wonderful to cut but they're also a little bit sticky you can see right there so let's come back in As I reach the end of my cut up here at the tip of the leaf, I'm going to roll my graver hard left and create a flare at the tip of that leaf. It'll give it some depth. One of the things you'll notice about this piece is the consistent backbone width. Let me zoom in a little closer for you. As I cut, I'm maintaining a consistent width here. We don't want to get closer and further away. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and cut the outside leaves here. Alright, so there's the outline of a scroll. Now let's start shading. This is where we create depth in the piece. I'm going to start from the top here. Everybody shades their own pieces a little differently everybody's leaves are shaped a little bit differently. If you're just starting, you'll probably sort of mimic somebody else's work a little bit. And it's okay to mimic people's work at first. Eventually your life will, I mean your work will start to take on a life of its own and that's the goal. To have something that people recognize as being cut by you. Oh, I forgot to mention we're cutting with a 105 parallel point graver. This one, all my 105's are marked with an orange ring. And this one is a carbide graver. And I can tell that because it's marked with a gray ring on top. That way I don't have to wonder what my point geometry is. I want 
consistent even spacing here. And I want a very gradual taper. From the start to the finish. Now something to consider as you watch me work, if you choose to go with a pneumatic graver like this, it still occasionally happens that somebody will claim that your, uh, your machine engraving or cheating or that you're not really hand engraving. And I always tell people the same thing. If I put this down without my hand, the machine won't do a thing. The only thing that this machine does is drive a little piston inside the handpiece, which helps drive it forward. And that just saves me from having to push and granted it is easier. It saves wear and tear on my shoulder and my elbow, my hand, but I'm still controlling the graver with my hand. This is not a machine that I can program to do the work for me. In other words, When people ask me why does hand engraving cost so much, I just let them watch one of these videos. little better angle for you here. There's our first section. Now, normally I would remove my background first and then I would do my shading. But I got a little excited to show y'all how this works and did the shading first. So let's go ahead and remove the background. I'll tell you what, let's do a, a different type of background here. Let's do a line background. That way we don't have to drop it all the way down. And we'll show you background removal on another video. Some people will put layout lines ahead of time but we're just going to eyeball this one.
And there we go. That's our first section. And it's a good little example of using the, the pneumatic handpiece. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to doing the rest of it with you. I add one little leaf here just for some balance on the bottom. One of the main goals of a scroll design like this is to keep a balance of positive and negative space as you go through the piece. I think we've done a pretty good job of that here. So I hope you enjoyed it. We've got a lot of stuff planned on this plate. Y'all stick around for the rest of it. We'll do this in a multi-part series. And I will see y'all next time. Well, I'm really happy with the new filming rig and the images we're getting from that. Uh, I'm also really excited about the rest of this practice plate and where we're going with it. For the next episode, we're going to be shooting hammer and chisel and hand push. And if things go the way I expect them to, we'll probably also be filming a tutorial on fixing slips because I haven't used a hand push graver in nearly 15 years. So until next time, you can find me on Instagram at Lane Zolke. You can also find me online at www.southerncustomengraving.com. Like and subscribe. Please leave a comment below if you have a suggestion for the channel. And until next time, keep your gravers sharp and have fun at the bench. Thank y'all.